fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Jackknife Hill was the longest grade between Denver and the town of Medicine Springs. Trains westbound from Denver frequently slowed almost to a halt before the engines reached the top of the long slope. It was here the train robbers had struck twice and successfully escaped with gold coins consigned to Medicine Springs. A third such shipment of gold was on the way. The train was scheduled to reach the top of Jackknife Hill at 5 o'clock in the evening. Two men were watching from the concealment of underbrush not far from the tracks. But they were not the train robbers. They were the Lone Ranger and Toto. The train is just about on time, Toto. You think crooks hiding nearby? Well, if they are, we'll do our best to capture them. I'm sure of one thing. Uh, and what that? The thieves have some way of knowing when gold is being sent to Medicine Springs. Why gold sent there? There are plenty gold mines close to Medicine Spring. Gold bullion from the mines is sent to Denver. Then the westbound train brings coin gold from the mint to the mine owners. Oh, and you savvy. Sheriff Bell believes the thieves are working out of Medicine Springs. Sheriff, friend of yours. Well, yes, Toto, a good friend. Why him not come here? Stand watch. If the crooks are in Medicine Springs, as he suspects, they'd know it when he left town to come here. They'd simply call off their plans to steal the gold. We want to catch them. The train nearly reached the top of slope. And still no sign of thieves. I wonder if they've learned that this part of the track is being watched. The engine reached the crest of Jackknife Hill and continued westward without incident. The train had passed. The masked man turned to Toto. Well, Toto, that shipment of gold should reach Medicine Springs safely. We go there now to see Sheriff Bell? No, Toto. It's a long way and the horses are tired. We'll camp here until daybreak. The train was scheduled to reach Medicine Springs at midnight. It was just before midnight when Sheriff Edward Bell hung up an ink-stained apron in the office of the Medicine Springs Gazette. Ed Bell still owned the newspaper. But his daughter, Julie, had been its manager since her father had been elected to the full-time job of sheriff. Well, honey, type set and locked. 
The place is ready to run first thing in the morning. And here's the coffee, Dad, hot from the stove. Oh, that'll taste mighty good. I wish you'd hire someone to set the type so you wouldn't have to work so late. I enjoy helping you, Julie. And it's only one night a week. What's more, I intended to stay up tonight until the train arrives. Dad, I wonder if you should have followed Barney Pitt's suggestion. To ride to Jackknife Hill and try to trap the train robbers? Yes. He told you there'd be another shipment of gold on tonight's train. <sighs> Mighty good cup of coffee. Barney Pitt will be after your badge if there's another gold robbery. Three times in a row. Julie, your job is running a newspaper. Barney Pitt's job is station agent for the railroad, and my job is sheriff. When I want advice from Barney Pitt, I'll ask for but it. Dad... Anyhow, Julie, <laughs> Jackknife Hill was well guarded. If those crooks showed themselves, they're in custody by this time. But how do you... Yeah, know? look at this. A bullet? A silver bullet, Julie. It came by mail yesterday. There was a note with it. From the, the Lone Ranger? Yep. He and Tonto were watching Jackknife Hill when the train passed there. Oh, Dad, that's wonderful. Now mind you, Julie, not a word about it to anyone. But how did you get the help of the Lone Ranger? He helped me once before, Julie. And he said to let him know if I ever needed him again. Well, I figured I needed him to catch the gold thieves. So I sent word to a preacher who knows how to reach him. Do you think the Lone Ranger will come here? If he catches the crooks, he'll bring them in. He may come here anyway. As you were hope so. Well, there's a train. A few minutes early. I'll go to the station to meet it. I'll go with you. I hear the train stopping. Yeah. Dad, uh, those shots. Sounds like the shooting is down by the tracks. Oh, Dad. Who's on duty at the station? Barney Pitt or his assistant? Johnny Coates is working tonight. Then you go next door and get Barney Pitt. All right. Tell him there's gunplay and it seems to be at the station. Tell him I've gone there. As the sheriff raced past the darkened houses along the main street of town, he drew his guns. He turned a corner and passed the cattle yards, and finally the large warehouse that blocked the view of the station. Then he saw the train. The conductor and the engineer were kneeling beside the express guard, while the fireman helped young Johnny Coates, the assistant station agent, to his feet. What's your gun play? You mean robbed the express car and got away. You mean they staged a robbery right here at the station? That's right, Sheriff. Their faces were covered with bandanas. They held guns on me while the train pulled into the station. When it stopped and the guard opened the door of the express car to unload the gold, I, I tried to shout a warning, but one of the crooks slugged me. The other one started firing at me. You were the guard? Yeah. Al Summers is my name, hey, sir. You've been hit in the arm. In both arm. They put me out of the fight, but I didn't lose consciousness. I saw him climb into the express car and grab the box of gold. Those two knew what they were about, Sheriff. They didn't waste any time. Dave, here's Bonnie Pitt. Uh, what happened, Sheriff? I heard the shooting. Two men robbed the express car. Uh, they get away with the gold? Yeah, they made the getaway in a wagon, Mr. Pitt. He had a team in buckboard at the side of the station. Well, didn't anyone try to stop them? The engineer and conductor jumped off the train and opened fire. In the darkness, it was too hard to hit the poor cats. By the time the engineer and conductor got back here with lanterns, the crooks had gotten away in the wagon. They had fast horses. Oh, well, you've oh. been hurt. Someone get the doctor. Yes, I'll go. I'm going to look for tracks of that wagon. It's a dark night to follow tracks, Sheriff. If need be, I'll follow him by lantern light. The summers, we'll wait inside the station for the doctor. You come along, Johnny. I want to talk to you. All right, Mr. Pitt. Yeah, sit right down here, Summers. Uh, I'll be all right. I'll bandage your wounds until the doctor arrives. Johnny? This is the third time we've lost a gold shipment. Oh, I know it, Mr. Pitt, and I'm I think so... you could have prevented this robbery. Well, how could I? I did my best. You tried to warn us, Mr. Pitt. When I shouted a warning, the crooks knocked me out. Mm-hmm. That might have been done so you wouldn't be suspected. What? Suspected of what? You think I was working with those crooks? Someone's letting them know when there's gold coming through. It strikes me as mighty strange that the gold is always stolen while the railroad is responsible. Never when your uncle is freighting it. What are you getting at? Your uncle, Ben, picks up gold shipments here at the station and freights them south to the mine owners. Well, that's his business, freighting. Well, it'd be much easier for crooks to stick up your uncle's freight wagon than to rob the train. But the gold is never stolen from your uncle. It's always stolen from the train. Now, hold on, Mr. Pitt. My uncle Ben has nothing to do He's with this. He's been against the railroad from the beginning. Probably because it cuts into his freighting business. Since he can't compete with the railroad, he's... I found the tracks of the wagon... I'll get a posse in front of them. Well, that's fine, Sheriff. Now, listen, Mr. Pitt. If you think my Uncle Ben had anything to do with this robbery... The crooks are working with someone who knows when gold will be shipped. They could find that out in Denver. Yes, and they could find it out here in Medicine Springs. 
From you or your uncle. Ah, you. You let go of me. Now let go when you take back what you said about my Uncle Ben. Let it go, Johnny. I ought to break his neck. You heard me, Johnny. <laughs> All right, Sheriff. Coach. Coach, you're fired. You come around in the morning, get your pay. The doctor came and dressed Summer's wounds. The train continued on its way. The sheriff swore in a few deputies and set out with lanterns to try to follow the wagon trail. Barney Pitt attended to a number of details, then went to his home. He sat in the living room for over an hour. Then he heard a light tap on the rear door. It was the signal for which he waited. He hurried through the kitchen and opened the door. Two men stood there. They were known as Cherokee and Brush. Uh, come in, boys. You covered your tracks? Yeah, they're covered. What did you do with the wagon? Well, he cut the horses free and shoved it over the edge of Stonewall Canyon. Here's your share of the loot in this saddlebag, boss. What about our next job? There'll be no next job, at least not for some time. We're lucky we got away with it tonight. Well, how so? I suggested to the sheriff that he go out and keep an eye on Jackknife Hill. He didn't do it. But the way he looked at me, he has something up his sleeve. There may be railroad detectives working on these robberies. You'd better lie low. And the sheriff is right here in town. Yes, he's out now looking for you two. Let him look. Even in daylight, he can't follow our tracks far. We're in the clear. Now, you may not stay in the clear. What do you mean? I told you I think the sheriff has some outside help on these robberies. Federal men or railroad detectives might find clues that would lead to us. The one thing is sure, there'll be an investigation. Well, how would it be if we fixed things so the investigation ended in a hurry? Yeah, what do you mean? Frame someone for the robbers? I've already considered that. In fact, I started working on it tonight. You want any help from us? All you have to do is keep an eye on Ben Coates, the freighter. When you have a chance, plant a couple of hundred dollars in gold in his place, together with a few of the canvas bags that held the coins. Oh, yeah, I savvy. Yes, I thought you would, Cherokee. But remember this, we'll have to work fast. The law will not rest until someone is jailed. And the sooner we hand the sheriff a prisoner, the better off we'll be. At daybreak, the Lone Ranger and Tonto left their camp on Jackknife Hill and started toward Medicine Springs, not knowing that a gold robbery had taken place. And in Medicine Springs, the gold thieves, Brush and Cherokee, were also on the move before sunrise. As they walked toward the stable where old Ben Coates kept his freight wagon and horses, Brush grumbled. You go on to the stable, Cherokee. I'll see you there later. Where are you going? To find a cup of coffee and some breakfast. As the man called Cherokee approached the stable, the big wooden door swung open. Ben Coates propped a board against it to keep it from closing. Ben turned to re-enter the barn-like building when Cherokee called. Well, howdy, Mr. Coates. Good well, morning, Mr. Oh, Cherokee's my name. Huh. I've seen you around town, but I reckon we've never met. You want some freighting done? Uh, no, leastwise not today. It looks like you're set to travel. Yeah, the wagon's loaded and the team's hitched. I'm heading for the mines. What about your nephew, the one who works in the railroad station? You mean used to work in the railroad station? Johnny was fired last night, and I'm just as glad that ugly-looking station agent told him he was through. Now on, Johnny will work with me. I always said he should stick to freight. Well, then Johnny will be traveling with you this trip. That's right. From now on, we'll work together. Well, glad to hear it, Mr. Coates. Please, Mr. You're coming. Hey, what? hey, Johnny, what's the idea of pulling a gun on Cherokee? The last time I saw this fella, he had a bandana over his face. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Vault to continue. Johnny Coates had been in the rear of the stable when Cherokee entered and spoke to old Ben. Johnny had recognized the outlaw's voice. Holding a gun in his hand, Johnny said, You're one of the train robbers. Ah, oh, you're local. Tell that to the sheriff. Johnny, what are you talking about? Last night's train robbery, Uncle Ben. This is one of the train robbers. I recognize his voice. Take his guns. Well, all right, if you say so. Now you're making a mistake, Johnny. You're I... the one who made the mistake, mister. I'd recognize your voice anywhere. And I'll know your partners when I hear it. You're hearing it now, kid. What? Drop your gun. He's right behind you, Johnny. And I'm covering both of you. Drop your gun, kid, or I'll let your uncle have it. All right. Now take that gun. Now give me mine. Here, here. I was afraid you wouldn't get here in time to take over, Brush. I wouldn't be here if I'd been able to find something to eat. But the restaurant and the cafes aren't open yet. I didn't think both of you'd be loco enough to stay in town after that robbery. Shut up. What'll we do with them, Cherokee? Yeah, Barney wanted us to frame what? the old man. Barney? The, the station agent? Barney Pitt is working Cherokee, with you. Cherokee, you junkhead. Now they'll go to the Don't law. Don't worry, they... Brush. We'll take care of them. Put ropes on both of them. Why, right, you... Uh, uh, you dirty poor Stand still, I... Coach. <laughs> Tie the old man put a gag on him. And put ropes in the gag on Johnny. Right. Brush found ropes in the stable. Ben and Johnny were tied hand and foot and effectively gagged. Then they were lifted into the big freight wagon. Uh, close the tailgate. Yeah. Now what, Cherokee? I'll drive the wagon along the regular route. You plant the gold in the sacks in Coates' house. And get our horses and follow me. I'll look for you along War Bonnet Tree. If anyone should see you driving a it's freight... It's too early in the day for that. No one's around. I'll see you later. Right. Get up. Get up there. Get up now. Shortly after Cherokee left town driving the freight wagon with the two helpless men on board, Sheriff Bell prepared to renew his search for the thieves. He was saddling his horse when Julie came from the house. Starting out again, Dad? Yes, honey. We didn't have much luck last night. The crooks dumped the wagon into Stonewall Canyon. I'm going to try to find some tracks here and follow them. Well, are you going alone? Yes. Well, good luck, Dad. And be careful. Well, thanks, Julie. Get up there. The sheriff's search was slow and tedious. At noon, he heard the sound of approaching hoops. Who's oh, 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 oh. 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 We're on our way to town to see you. Well, mister, I'm plenty glad you're here. I have a lot to tell you. Sheriff Bell quickly told his masked friend and Tonto of the robbery that had occurred at the railroad station the night before. He explained that the express guard and young Johnny Coates were the only men who had seen the thieves. Is Johnny Coates in Medicine Spring? He's probably with his uncle. Ben planned to move freight to the mines today. I reckon the wagon's somewhere along War Bonded Trail right now. Now, we'll try to overtake them unless you need help here. Say, hey, uh, Tonto's better at cutting the sign than I am. Uh, I'd be much obliged if he'd help me follow these tracks. I'd be glad to help. Well, thanks, Tonto. Sheriff, I'll meet you both in town later. Adios. 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 Come on, Silver. It was mid afternoon when Cherokee turned the heavy freight wagon off the main trail. Brush rode alongside the wagon, leading Cherokee's big gray horse. He drew rein when Cherokee halted the team in a secluded valley few people knew about. Ho, 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 ho. ho. All right, unhitch the team. Yeah, steady there. Then what? And we're clearing out of here. What about Johnny Coates and his uncle? We leave him tied and gagged in the back of the wagon. Well, we can't do that, Cherokee. They might get free of those ropes. Now, what if they do? They'll have to walk back to town. It'll be a mighty long hike. Meantime, we'll start spreading a story around town that they've cleared out with a stolen gold. The sheriff will investigate. I savvy for your scheme, Cherokee. As soon as the sheriff searches their place, he'll find the gold and sacks I left there. Right. Only thing is, they'll tell the truth when they get to town. Sure. But no one will believe them. By that time, we'll have them framed so tight, they'll never get clear. Now, give me a hand. We'll unhitch the horses and lead them away from here. You're planning to go back to Medicine Springs with Ben's team in tow? Of course not. We'll turn them loose as soon as we're away from this valley. Right. <laughs> Wait till Barney Pitt hears about this. Yeah. <laughs> we'll go back to the railroad station in town and report to him. He's due for a big surprise. Brush and Cherokee unhitched the team and led it out of the valley. They left the animals several miles from the deserted wagon. Then they headed for town. Get him! Get him! Hit him! On. Get him! The Lone Ranger had been traveling hard to overtake the wagon. 
Shortly after Brush and Cherokee had left Ben's horses, the masked man sighted the animals. When he saw the dangling traces and harness gear, he followed their back trail. It was plain and easy to read. It led him directly to the wagon in the hidden valley. Oh, 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 easy, silly big fella. The letters on the high sides of the canvas-topped vehicle identified it. Easy, silly now. Ben Coates freight wagon. Help! What? Help! The call for help came from inside the wagon. The Lone Ranger moved quickly to the tailgate. He opened it and saw Johnny and Ben. Help us, mister. Cut these ropes and up. Oh, your mask. You needn't worry about my mask. I'll cut those ropes. Yeah, my wrists are nearly raw. I've been trying to loosen the ropes. I was lucky enough to work the gag out of my mouth. You all right, Uncle Ben? <laughs> there, your hands and feet are free. Gosh, thanks, mister. I'll take the gag off my uncle's mouth while you cut his ropes. Are you Johnny Coates? I... How'd you know my name? I've been looking for you and your uncle. There. Mister, we're doggone lucky you found us. I'm much obliged to you for cutting those ropes. Mask or no mask? You better rub your wrist to restore the circulation. Uh, good idea. Mister, you, you said you were looking for us. Yes, I wanted to question you about the gold robbery at the railroad station last night. Now I'd also like to know who tied you and left you here. Same polecats who robbed the train. They're trying to frame us for the robberies. How long ago did they leave here? Uh, I couldn't judge that. We've been tied so long, I've lost track of time. They left the team loose, then headed back to town. I found your horses and left them at Ground Hitch. You'll have no difficulty finding them if you follow their tracks. Do that, mister. Where are you going? I'm going to follow the men who left you here. I heard them say they were going to the railroad station to report to Barney Pitt. Well, thanks for the information. Steady, Silver. Easy, big fellow. I'll send help from town. We'll not need it. As soon as we get the team back, I'll hitch them and we'll head for Medicine Springs. I may see you there. Come on, Silver. <laughs> The sheriff had not returned to Medicine Springs by 5 o'clock that evening. Julie went to the railroad station, hoping to get more information from Barney Pitt. She entered the station and called. Mr. Pitt! I'm in my office, Miss Julie. If you want to see me, you'll have to come in here. I can't leave the telegraph key. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just wondered if there were anything new on last night's robbery. Well, you'd better ask your father that question. Well, uh, that's the end of the message. Was the message about the robbery? No, Miss Julie. Merely a change in the eastbound schedule. Oh. I, I'm very busy, Miss Julie. Someone came into the station, Mr. Pitt. Yes, I heard them. <laughs> go see who it is. I'll watch the telegraph key for That's you. That's not necessary. Boss, Mr. Pitt, where are you? Hey, I'm coming. Just a minute. Barney Pitt recognized the voices of Brush and Cherokee. He hurried across his office and was about to close the door behind him so Julie, who was inside, would not have a chance to see him talking to the two hoodlums. Brush and Cherokee weren't aware of this in their eagerness to report the day's activities. Boss, Johnny Coates recognized us as the train robbers. Hold on, Brush. It's the truth, Mr. Pitt. We've taken care of the kid and his uncle. Shut up, uh, Cherokee. What's wrong? Oh, you big-mouthed idiots. What's the idea of coming here? I told you to come to my house after dark if you wanted to talk to me. But we thought you'd want to know how we framed Johnny and his uncle. Shut up! All right, if you say so, Mr. Pitt. We left to act fast if we're going to spread a story about those two. That's why we came here. Oh, here. you junkheads. What's wrong? Come here. I'll show you what's wrong. I heard what you said. It's the sheriff's daughter. That's what I was trying to tell you. Now you'll have to commit a murder. Stay away from me. Driver. Help! Help! Put your hand over her mouth. Help! Yeah. She's Help. fighting like a wildcat. Charity, Help. close the station door. Hold it to make sure no one comes in here. Right, boss. Hey, you. It's too bad you heard so much, Miss Julie. No, oh, she bit me. She... Help! Boss, grab her arm so she can't claw my face. Cherokee! Cherokee! She's not available. Release that girl. Julie fell sobbing to the floor as Brush and Barney Pitt whirled to face the masked man, who had suddenly appeared in the doorway. The station agent and the hoodlum made fast grabs for their guns. But the Lone Ranger's twin Colts were already in action. Silver bullets winged Barney and Brush. Speak up if you want more gunplay. I arm your mask. That doesn't mean I'm on your side of the law. They're, they're the train robbers. They've done something to Johnny Coates and his uncle. Yes, I know, Miss Julie. Johnny and his uncle are all right. Oh, Julie. Dad. Oh, Dad. These poor kids hurt you? No, no, Dad, I'm all right. But they, they were going to kill me. Sheriff, where did you come from? Surprised to see me, eh, Pitt? Well, you're not half as surprised as your friend Cherokee was. We got him when he stepped outside to bolt the door. 
He's on the station platform right now, telling the masked man's friend Tonto all he knows. Now, listen, Sheriff, don't believe Cherokee's lying. He... You're the one who's lying, Barney Pitt. Those two hoodlums worked for you. I heard them call you boss. They came here to report that they'd taken care of Johnny Coates and his uncle. No, no. You're finished, Barney. Say, Tonto, will you bring Cherokee in here? Uh-huh. You bring him. Dad, you and the masked man got here just in time. But how did you know I was here? I didn't know that, honey. Tonto and I were following tracks. We were at the outskirts of town when the masked man came riding toward us. He told us to mount and follow him. And he, he led you here? Yes. We heard you scream for help, so we drew our guns and were set to come in shooting when Cherokee stepped outside. Say, uh, mister, how'd you know what was happening here? Uh, Johnny told me these two were heading for Pitt's office. Uh, you get in there. All right, it's in all right. Cherokee, you stupid double-crosser. Why didn't you warn us? Why didn't you let us know the law was closing in? Uh, I didn't have a chance. You didn't talk, did you, Cherokee? Oh, oh. him talk plenty. What? Even tell where we find loot from train oh, robbery. Oh, no, we're oh. finished, Brush. Yeah. You're right, Pete. You and your pals will be out of circulation for a long time. I'll see that the railroad hears the true facts of what happened. Johnny Coates will probably get his job back and a promotion besides. Otto, if you'll help the sheriff take the prisoners to jail... I'll ride to meet Johnny to tell him the good news. Uh, me help him, Kim Sally. Good enough. I'll see you later, Sheriff. Right, Missy. Adios. Adios. Well, Barney, looks like you outsmarted yourself. What made you think you could get away with framing Johnny and his uncle? I wouldn't have tried to frame them, but I... Well, I thought you'd called outside help to work on the case. I did. If I'd known that masked man and the Indian were detectives in disguise... Detectives? <laughs> <laughs> They're not disguised, Barney. This Indian is Tonto, and the masked man you tangled with is the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.